Gary Wilkerson here with you again. I want to talk to you today about three elements that will bring you to a life of perfect peace. Isn't that amazing? He doesn't just say partial peace. He says perfect peace. First one is the problem with peace. Many of us have a problem uh, sustaining peace, holding on to peace, or maybe ever having peace in the first place. There is a problem with peace. Matthew chapter 10, verse 13, Jesus tells uh, his disciples that when they go out into a house, when you go into a house that it's worthy, leave your peace upon that house. If the house is not worthy, return that peace to yourself. This can almost be parabolic. Uh, it can almost be illustrate uh, the Holy Spirit coming into a uh, to, to abide on a, on, a, on a heart and on a life, on a mind, and then that heart not being worthy, not being... Now, we can't be worthy in ourselves, but what this worthy means is unaccepting or uh, not availing to that the, the power of God, to the, to the plan of God to come into your life. And so there's a resistance, uh, trying to work it out in your own strength, trying to um, get peace through... Um, self-talk, through pop psychology, through motivational speeches, through uh, an up and down sort of mentality. And that, that is never going to, you're going to always have a problem with peace when you try to have peace in your own heart. So it has to, you have, your heart has to be a place where the Holy Spirit can abide. You remember when the dove lifted up off the, uh, Noah sent the dove out uh, when the flood was receding and he found no place to land, no place worthy to land. And he came back to the, to the ark. Uh, God is looking for a place to land. He's looking for a place for his peace to settle on. And only the heart that comes to the knowing the, the, the love of Jesus and the blood of Jesus and the grace of Jesus is ever going to find secure, eternal, long-lasting peace. How can you get that? Well, it's the, number two is by the price. There's a price paid already for peace. It's the price that Jesus Christ on the cross has paid for your peace. Isn't that exciting? You don't have to strive for peace. You don't have to try to read um, 10 theological, uh, dogmatic, doctrinal books about peace. You don't have to try to hear what uh, some prophet is saying about peace. Uh, peace has already been provided for you. He has already landed upon the, the blood-bought child, uh, daughter, son of God. He's already uh, landed upon you and brought you the peace of Christ. It's not the peace of your own mind, of your own understanding, of your own will. It is the peace of Christ that, that, that he gives to you. It's been purchased uh, there's been a ransom, there's been a price paid. So you go to God and say, I'm, I'm looking for peace. And he says, well, the, the, the price has already been paid. Let's apply it to your heart now and that you can walk in, in an abiding peace, a peace of mind, a peace of heart, a peace in your emotions, a, pe a peace in your relationship with God. All these things are, are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Here as we get ready to celebrate Resurrection Weekend, Easter Sunday, uh, there's no greater message than knowing that, that he paid the price which we could not pay. In my place, he stood condemned. He took my sin. He took my fear. He took my hatred. He took my anxiety. He took my worry. He took my rebellion. And then, then he exchanged it for his grace, for his power, for his wisdom, for his peace. As you take on Christ Jesus, the Bible says, put on Christ Jesus. As we put him on and he becomes our armor, then we are filled with the things that God is filled with, perfect uh, peace that cannot be shaken. The third and last one, <coughs> excuse me, is the promise of peace. Uh, Jesus promised, he says, this, uh, my peace I will give to you. Uh, this, this is something that he promises you and his promises are always yes and amen. If God does not give everyone who has received the purchase of the blood of Jesus Christ, if God refuses to give one of his children uh, refuses to give one of his children a lack of peace, or if he doesn't give them peace, the result of that will be that God has not found himself to be true. We know that that can't happen. He's not a liar. God is always true. God is truth. He is the epitome of truth, and therefore his promises will come true. One of those promises in Psalms 97 verse 11 says, light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. So so the Holy Spirit is is, is putting into your heart and into your mind and into your emotions the seed uh, of the light of God. And as it is sown, it, it uh, brings, uh, uh, the, <clears throat> brings the life and the light and the joy and the peace. That's what Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11 says, peace, the peaceable fruit of righteousness. The fruit is growing as of righteousness is growing in you and you'll become more and more peaceful. <clears throat> um, some, some people might say, well, you know, He's put seed in my heart of peace, but I'm not feeling the peace. Well, sometimes peace is a, uh, like any other of the fruit of the Spirit, is a, is a process of maturation. It has to mature. 
uh, just like your wisdom matures, your love matures, you're, you're adding things to this. Well, that seed in your heart, again, the promise of God is that that seed is going to grow. And so what starts off very small, could you picture a, um, a small uh, sprouting flower coming up out of the garden and, and it's, the wind is blowing it and it rains and there's floods covering it and it feels like it's not gonna be sustained. Well, God promised you that that seed of righteousness would be sustained. What he's sown into your heart will be a fruitful, uh, the fruit of righteousness. It'll be peaceful in your heart. And therefore, that's why Psalm 37 verse 36 says this, mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. The end of that man's gonna be peaceful. The end of that woman's gonna be peaceful. He, he may look shaken, she may look troubled. She may be crying over the current situation, a loss of a loved one or uh, <clears throat> troubled of, of uh, circumstances around them. Uh, but that, that which is uh, sorrow for the night, joy comes in the morning. God has peace for you. The end of that life will be <clears throat> peace. And that is the three things simply that God wants to do is help us overcome the problem with peace, uh, being un, uh, unreceptive to the kingdom of God, the price of peace Jesus already paid for you. Therefore, he gave you a promise. If you don't feel like that promise is working in you, just wait, let it grow. And sometimes times of testing and tribulation are exactly what causes that thing to grow. Because if you're listening to this video, you're probably searching for peace. You're probably wondering, how can I get more of this promise realized in my heart? Well, that's the hunger that's, that fertilizes that, that, that seed that grows in your heart. You will become more peaceful as a result of this. When more storms come, if this is what I believe it is, that Jesus talked about the birth pangs of uh, the end times, and the birth pangs get more and more difficult. They get closer together. They become more intense. Uh, something like this has to prepare you for times to come when things get even more difficult. If you can't uh, run with the... Uh, uh, the footman, how can you run with the horses? So learn right now uh, to run this race with peace in your heart. God bless you. Have a wonderful Easter weekend coming up. I have a couple more videos between now and the weekend, and I pray that you're being inspired by this. Check out our uh, website at worldchallenge.org, and also there's a place there where you can receive prayer at pray.worldchallenge.org, pray.worldchallenge.org. Grace and peace to you. Have a wonderful afternoon.